The readings of today have one and the same theme. And that theme is that Jesus, who is our brother, our priest, our savior, is also our eternal king. In the first reading, we read from the prophet Jeremiah this command of the prophet asking people to rejoice. Because God is going to bring you from wherever you are scattered back to your homeland. He will heal the sick. He will give strength to the crippled. He will give sight to the blind. It will be a renewal of what has been there. A renewal not only of the phys physical, but a renewal of the very honor. The very honor God gave to the children of Israel. The very dignity that God, God gave to the children of Israel. Rejoice. Shout for joy. And in the second reading, we see something that many people overlook when they read the letter to the Hebrews. It is about the priestly office. The author says this, that every high priest stands every day, offering day and night not only for the sins of the people, but first for his own sins, because he, as a human being, is subject to weakness. But in Jesus, we see a high priest who is not limited by human weakness. And he didn't offer goat, he didn't offer sheep, he didn't offer any animal. Instead, he offered himself. Other high priests' office come to an end when they die. But in the case of Jesus, his priesthood is not the Aaronian priesthood, the Levitical priesthood. It is a different kind of priesthood that comes by special appointment. And therefore, the author says that Jesus' priesthood is comparable only to the eternal priesthood of this mystical figure, Melchizedek. That Jesus is a priest forever, not in the order of Aaron, but in the order of Melchizedek. And we understand these things I'm talking about if we carefully read already in the, as early as in the time of 2 Samuel, when the prophet Nathan tells David about the Davidic son, in quotes, who will be a king forever. If we read Psalm 110, it kinds of supports that we have we have we can read in second samuel chapter 7 and we see this in the prophecy of prophet isaiah when he talks about the sign he said this is the sign the sign is that a virgin will be with child for a virgin to be with child is strange is a sign because no woman who is with a child is still a virgin People don't understand the meaning of what the prophet wrote. A virgin will be with child. How can you see a woman pregnant and you still call her a virgin? No woman who is pregnant is still a virgin. But in this case, a virgin is with child. And she will give birth to a son who will be the savior. His name will be Emmanuel, God with us. We see that fulfillment in Jesus when he became a human being. As St. Matthew writes in Matthew chapter 1 about the long genealogy of Jesus, just arrive at a point, and the point he was looking for is to say that Jesus is the son of David. Fulfilling that prophecy in 2 Samuel chapter 7 and fulfilling the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 7. And now, who is this Jesus? Prophet Isaiah helps us again. He says he's the mighty God who will carry the government on his shoulders. Therefore, Jesus is king. The king of the world, the king as other kings of the world, no. Just like his priesthood, his kingship lasts forever. Because he's the Davidic son whose kingdom will have no end. And therefore, we can now understand the gospel reading 
while the blind man was shouting, Jesus, son of David, son of David, many people who were around the blind man didn't know. So that it was the man who was blind that showed people who were physically healthy, who could see physically, but we are blind spiritually. The mind might be blind physically, but was he blind spiritually? No, because he was the only one who knew the identity of Jesus among the people. Other people were behaving controlled by what we call mob psychology, doing what everybody is doing. But the blind man was singled out. He wasn't distracted by the noise. He knew who was among them, and he called upon him for help. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Today, the lesson that is coming to you as an individual and to us as a family is that we all need Jesus. Many of us who have no problems with our sight may be spiritually very blind. Because I say this every time I speak, that if we were to know the mystery of the Holy Eucharist, what we celebrate, the fact that the priest can say, this is the Lamb of God, something that converted a very prominent Protestant pastor, Scott Hahn. He came to Mass, and when the priest said, this is the Lamb of God, he said, that is it. I will be a Catholic immediately. How can a priest say, this is the Lamb of God? who takes away the sins of the world. It means that the priest believes that what he is showing the people is real. There is no argument about whether Jesus is present in the Holy Eucharist or not, because the church celebrates that. That's what the priest means when he says this is. He doesn't say this represents or this is a sign of this is. Shall we continue to be spiritually blind if Jesus is in our midst, if Jesus is present, how much of the church's teaching do we believe that Jesus is really substantially present in the Holy Eucharist? If we believe this, why are we still spiritually blind? If we have problem with that, why can't we talk to Jesus today and ask him, like the blind man, son of David, have mercy on me? Is there anyone who has ever asked Jesus for sight, for spiritual healing, and has been denied? No one. For Jesus says in St. Luke's Gospel, If you who are able know how to give good things to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father not give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Today, in this Holy Mass, I like all of us, to have the same attitude of genuine asking and insistence of this man who was simply described as the son of Timaeus, Bar Timaeus. And like him said to Jesus, son of David, our savior, our high priest, our brother, have mercy on me. And when you come forward to receive the Holy Communion, be aware of what you are receiving. You are receiving that king of kings. You are receiving the eternal high priest. You are receiving the one who offered his body, not the blood of sheep or the blood of goat. You are receiving the true body of Jesus, the true blood of Jesus. And when you say amen, you are like that man who had the courage to stand outside the crowd and say, have mercy on me. You receive Jesus into you and remember what St. Augustine teaches us, that we become what we receive. So that when you receive the Eucharist today, be aware that you are going to be transformed into Jesus. You become what you receive. You receive the body of Christ in the Eucharist. You become an active member of the body of Christ, the Holy Church. Be aware of what you are receiving. Be aware of the answer to your prayer. Let Jesus transform you. Let him open the blindness that, like St. Augustine says in the Confessions, that the Lord showed the beam of his light and chased away my blindness. 
He cried to me and cured my deafness. May the Lord Jesus cure your deafness today. And may the beam of his holiness chase away the blindness of your physical eyes as well as your spiritual eyes. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.